Hi everyone, today we're in my micro workshop in my utility room and we're going to try and do something with this vice and this MFT table. Now vice is something that I'm always wanting to use but it's never easy to mount onto this MFT table and therefore I am going to try and remedy that this week. So I use this MFT table for mostly assembly and I do some bits of woodwork on it. So I do need to be able to take this vice off of the table when I'm doing woodwork and I've got large sheets on here. Now this is just a just a cheap silver line vise. Um, the mounting holes for it do not exactly line up with the 96 millimeter spacing I've got for these MFT holes. And also it's a little bit of a faff having to thread a bolt through and then put my hand underneath and screw it into and lock it into the table. And when you're working with like M6 or M8 bolts and nuts, it's just so much threading to get it as a nice tight fit. So what I want to do is I want to be able to take this on and off very, very easily and quickly. And also I want to be able to fix it from the top of the table. I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to do that at the moment, but I do have a few ideas. So let's go over them. So the first idea is to just mount it onto a plate and then use some of these like quick clamps to fasten it to the table. The problem is with that is that I do use these uh, clamps quite a lot. I don't have many of them and it's just an extra step that I've got to try and faff around to get this on and off. I don't really want to go that route. I'd rather have it mounted to a plate, but I would like the way that it attaches to the table to be permanently attached to this plate. So that way I can just place this vise and the plate onto the table and just bolt it in. Uh, I want it all attached and I can just take it on and off very, very easily. I don't have to worry about storing away these when I'm not using them or if I'm using them for another project. Now another way to do it is to use maybe some sort of fixing from the top. I've been taking a look in my tool chest and I've had a look at the fixings that I've got that can be secured through plasterboard. I really like these ones. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what they're called, but basically as you screw it in, uh, these legs, they kind of span out and they grip onto it. So I was thinking of maybe making some sort of mechanism that could thread through the hole and then as I screw it, some sort of legs will kind of expand outwards and, and grip onto the underside of the table. I think that would probably be a little bit too complicated because it needs to fit into these 20 mil dog holes. So it's going to be really finicky mechanisms and really small fixings that are probably not going to be very strong. What I've decided to have a go at trying to replicate is these concrete anchors. So these are pretty cool. As you thread it in, basically there's a kind of like a plug at the bottom that gets pulled up into these expanding parts here. And as this pulls up, it expands outwards and that causes it to lock into the hole. I think that if I maybe made something like that, well, that would thread through the hole and then I could essentially turn it and it would then expand and lock into these holes. I think that would work. Now, preferably I would be making this out of metal. I would really like to just kind of make a bigger version of this. And actually I've just thought, I wonder if they make M20 sizes of these. This is an M8 for an M8 bolt. And I'm pretty sure I can maybe find that, which would uh, save me a lot of time. But I'm partly doing this project to exercise the engineering part of my brain. So I really do want to improve on making things that require some sort of engineering to them. I don't have my CNC in operation at the moment because I'm upgrading the CNC enclosure. So it means that I'm either going to have to 3D print it or maybe use some sort of laser engraving. I'm not too sure at the moment. Another thing that I want to do is that because I know that threading these M6 or M8 uh, bolts takes a lot of time to wind it, I would like to use maybe some sort of gear to help to speed up that process. Now to get a gear in a compact space like this, uh, I think I'm going to experiment with planetary gears. So this is something that I've 3D printed. This is probably a little bit too big, but this is kind of what I'm thinking in that I can use the mechanical advantage of the, the gears in this to basically be an overdrive, not a reducer. I'm gonna make this an overdrive. So basically every single time I turn this, it will hopefully, I'll get a better gear ratio of like three to one or, or four, to win, four to one. So it will then turn this four times every single time I turn this, uh, the top part of it. I don't know, I need to work it all out. I've been asking ChatGPT ways that I can do this and it is actually quite helpful. But let's jump into Fusion and I'm going to show you what I have sketched up. Before we do that, I want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. If you need any type of fabrication from PCB etching to CNC machining, PCBWay can help you bring your design into reality. Or maybe you just need advice on how to bring a product to market, PCBWay can even help you with that with their turnkey OEM services, ranging from proof of concept prototyping to full design assembly and distribution. Whatever it is you need, 
PCBWay have you covered? So what I've done is I've started off with the planetary gear. Now I didn't model this myself because it would have taken me days to probably model something like this. I'm using a Fusion 360 add-on by Schwivel and it is the planetary gear maker. So I bought this myself. You can buy it from the Fusion 360 store. I think it's about $20. I've also bought his uh, bevel gear maker as well for another project that I'm working on. They are $20 a piece, which is quite expensive per add-on, but I mean, th this really does save you a lot of time. Now with the planetary gear maker, it's really handy and actually quite simple to use once you go through all of these settings. Basically what I did is I knew that I wanted my greater diameter um, to be, this is the overall diameter of the, of the ring gear. I know I didn't really want it too big, so I've just stuck with about 55 millimeter in diameter. And then basically I'm just playing around with the, the sun gear number uh, and I'm trying to get a higher ratio as possible. Uh, what I've got is I've got about 100 teeth, 109 teeth on my ring gear. I think my sun gear was around 40 or something like that, and the planets are around about 20. Um, if you do the calculations, basically it works out to about 3.5 to 1 gear ratio. But yeah, this, this add-on is really cool because you can, you, know, you can take a look at what exactly you're building. You've got many options for the teeth shape as well. Um, if someone could let me know, with herringbone, I did originally create it with a herringbone, but I don't know how you'd actually assemble it. I couldn't actually push it in. So what I did is I just went with uh, this one, which was a yeah helical. So all I've done is I've then just modeled in the, uh, the recess holes for the bearings that I'm gonna be using. These are just tiny little eight millimeter bearings. Um, I've put in the hex shape for the M6 hex head. And I've just added these wings, which I'm just gonna to use to attach to the, to the plate. I'm just gonna use wood screws for that. So, so this is what I did. I created the planetary gear and then I just built around this. What I'm doing is um, I added a handle. So this is gonna allow me to obviously twist these planets around. And I've just got some M3 bolts going through these holes, which will secure these planets in place. Then I added a uh, just a carrier plate, and this is just to stop the, the handle from pulling out, basically. And I've also got a base plate, and this will hold the expansion sleeve. And I'll just show you the expansion sleeve as well of what I've done. So you can see that I've got the expansion sleeve here, and I've got the expansion plug. And you can see we've got the hex, the M6 hex, coming through here. So as I turn it, the, uh, the screw will be turned, the bolt will be turned, and that will pull this plug up into these, uh, into this expansion sleeve, which will then cause it to expand outwards. And if I just show you uh, a side-on analysis view, you can see how this kind of works here. So I've also just added a, uh, a grub screw as well, just to stop this uh, M6 bolt from, from pushing upwards. Uh, this was many, many iterations. As you can see, this is version 13. A um, huge amount of tweaking, a huge amount of work went into this. This has probably been the most amount of revisions that I have printed for a project before. So much tweaking to get this to work. But yeah, you can hopefully see how this works. Ideally, I would have liked to have got a higher gear ratio, but this I think this is pretty much the limit of what you can do with a single planetary gear. Now what you can do is you, you can stack planetary gears on top of one another, but I'm, I'm already at quite a lot of height here and I didn't really want this interfering with what I'm gonna be placing on the vise. Uh, you, could, you could make this very low profile. You, you, know, you don't need to make the knob so big, you could actually make it really small as well. And also, I mean, I mean I've just modeled these. I think these are about about 15 millimeters in height or 20 millimeters. I'm not sure what is a, you know, a good thickness for planetary gears, but I just kind of made this up as I went along. So there you go, that is a quick overview of the handle. And if you're wondering how I get this really nice smooth movement and being able to kind of pan, twist, zoom in and out all at the same time, it is the uh, 3D Connection Space Mouse. I'd highly recommend you check it out. I'll put a link in the description. It really does speed up the process of uh, kind of moving around in these 3D environments. So next, let's get this printed and we'll see see if this actually works. I've been going through a few prototypes for the expansion sleeve. This is printed in the Resi 1. This is the, I think it's high impact, anti-impact, nylon-like resin. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting some of the layers to adhere, but I am actually very impressed with the performance of this, especially the layer adhesion, even though we do have a layer adhesion issue here. Um, this is, I mean, this is printed, uh, the 
it's sliced this way. So you'd expect these expansion arms to you know, snap off. And I have tested this and printed it at this orientation with PETG, and I literally flexed them a tiny bit and they just snapped. But with this uh, anti-impact resin, I mean, it is really tough. Like it will not snap, which is crazy. The layer adhesion of this resin is insane. I mean, I, it just will not snap, you can see there. So yeah, I would probably prefer to actually print these expansion sleeves in this uh, anti-impact nylon-like resin, but it's just very, very slow prototyping on a resin printer. I'm so used to just printing out prototypes on my Voron where things are just like 10 times quicker. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with a PETG version of the expansion sleeve. Now, it does mean it looks a little bit ugly. You can see on this side here, this is where we've got the supports. And basically, because I need the, the layers to be going horizontally across here, it does mean that, yeah, I need to print it kind of like this, and then I've got all the supports underneath. Um, and it, it just means that obviously this is much more flexible and obviously it's not going to snap. I'm probably eventually going to try and print some of these expansion sleeves in the nylon resin. But for now, we'll go with the PETG and just see how it holds up. First of all, I want to see how many turns it takes to actually kind of secure it because I don't want to be here all day. So let's just get it to a point where it's just starting to expand. Okay, so there it is. Don't have any resistance in the hole. And then one turn. Okay, so that's holding it really good. So one and a half turns and it's pretty much locked in there. And then one and a half. So that's really good. I'm really happy with that. So literally one turn and it locks in place. If you really crank it down, I mean, that's not going anywhere. You know, you'd have to pull it out and it'd have to, I guess, deform the plastic. I'm not sure how, I'm not sure how much this can really withstand. I mean, this is just a thin bit of uh, PETG and this is some Resi-1. This is just the, uh, the nylon, so it, pretty high impact resistance. It would be nice if there was a way that it maybe pulled it down into the table. I guess if this was actually a little bit longer um, so when it does actually expand, it's not just expanding in this hole, but it's maybe expanding on the underside, which would maybe pull it down. That's one possibility, but to be honest with you, I really only need it to just lock into, into this hole because I'm not going to be doing too much with this vice. It's not a really heavy duty vice. It's a pretty small thing and it's really just to hold things in place. I'm just working on bits and bobs. So... I'm really happy with that. I'm glad that I went through all of the hassle to actually make this a planetary gear. It just makes it that a little bit quicker, a little bit easier to, to fasten this on. So what we can do now is uh, I need to make another one of these. Maybe we'll do a little bit of refinement with how this fits together. Um, but let's get another one printed and then we can put it onto the plate finally. We use the S1 to mark out the holes and the shape for this plate. I've got the uh, the 25 mil holes drilled now. This is what is gonna accommodate the uh, the actual clamping mechanism. Uh, last thing I've got to do is to make some sort of fixing for the vise to go on here. These are the actual vise mounting holes. What I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use just some threaded inserts. So these are M6, which should be uh, plenty enough to hold the vise in place. I'll thread them in from the bottom and then obviously because it's got a little bit of a flange on it, it's not going to rip out. This plywood is absolutely terrible. This is just some cheap shuttering plywood that I've had left over from my shed build. I've got a massive void all the way along here, which is really annoying because that's exactly where the clamping mechanism is going to go. So I think I'm going to get some masking tape and try and just flood that with some wood glue and hopefully make it a little bit more stable. Okay, so ignore this one. I messed this up. I drilled the wrong size hole for it. I'm thinking M6, I just need to put a six mil hole for this threaded insert. Actually, it recommends like eight to nine mils. I've gone with a 7.5 mil drill bit here because this is pretty soft plywood and 7.5 seems to be good. I think this one will be okay. I don't think it's gonna be ripped out in any way. I don't know about you guys, but I never, ever, ever have the right size screws for any of these projects that I work on. So I've got a countersunk bit here and I've got two washers 
just to try and spread the load across this hole. And it's also the wrong length, so you can see that it kind of protrudes out there. So uh, I'm gonna have to cut the ends off of this. Let's just do a quick uh, test of lining this up. So obviously I can't set it down properly because I've got these protruding bolts, but that does look like it goes through and so is that one. Now all we need to do is get these clamps on and that should hopefully be it. The little bearings, I've got these tiny little eight mil ball bearings. These can easily just be pushed into these gears. I just get my Nipex ply wrenches and they can just push in. And because I don't have any hex head screws, I'm just gonna super glue a little nut to the uh, top of this countersunk screw. We just keep it held in place. And then this can be threaded and the nut will hold this sun gear in place. I've got the planets attached to the carrier and we can just fit in the, the sun. And then we need to put on the, the ring. I'll just put a tiny bit of, just a bit of bearing grease. So we can take it on and off. Probably need to cut down the screws a little bit. But that is held in nicely. It's not going to come out. And then I think it's two, three, yeah, about three turns, we can lock it down, three, yeah, okay. So I'm really happy with how that come out. I think I probably could have made these uh, knobs a little bit more of a lower profile. May experiment with some different sizes. I uh, will also maybe experiment with a, uh, a thicker sleeve just to see if I can get something a little bit more robust. I'm gonna put this through its paces over the next few months and just see how this 3D printed parts, they, how they hold up. I don't think there should be any problems, but at least now I can use this very nice and quickly and easy. The only thing I need to do next is just adapt my French cleat holder for device. I am going to just make some mounting holes for those clamps to go into so I can just tighten it up when it's on the wall. Now another thing that I have just thought about as well is that um, I actually designed this so we could actually see the planetary gears through it and I did it just purely for the video but um, I'm actually going to be obviously you know filing metal cutting things with this uh, it can easily fall into these uh, these holes in the gears so I will probably redesign this uh, carrier to just be solid so it just uh, obviously blocks any sort of debris getting into the planetary gears so thank you for watching if you've got any ideas or suggestions of how I can improve this system put them in the comments below once I finish tweaking the files I will put them up on Thingiverse and printable so you can take a look but that's it for today I will catch you later